Hello everyone, you are live with Jonathan Maynard, CEO of Maynard's Veteran Medical. And today we're coming to you with a talk about the Moleculite. And when you talk about products that are absolutely changing the world right now in the wound care arena, this is just one that is just at the top of the list that you have to know about. And Maynard's Veteran Medical's mission has always been bringing these cutting edge technology products to the very forefront so anyone at the VA and the DOD can learn about it, have access to it very quickly. Today, I have a special guest, Dr. Charles Anderson from Madigan Army um, Medical Center, and um, he is going to be doing a demonstration today and going through the in, in and out of the moleculite, how it works, you know, everything you need to know there. But I'm just so thankful to have him here today. Um, I'm at the end of the demonstration, we're going to have a back and forth, a, a good conversation, just going over some questions. And anyone that has any questions at all about the moleculite today, please throw them up in the comments. We will go through the majority of them at the end of this live stream and just spend time answering your questions directly. But without any further ado, I'm going to go ahead and bring in Dr. Charles Anderson. Hello, Dr. Anderson. Hi, Jonathan. Thank you for the introduction. Well, thank so you so much. My name is Chuck Anderson. I'm a vascular surgeon by trade. And as uh, Jonathan said, I work at uh, Madigan Army Medical Center. At Madigan, we've had a limb preservation initiative uh, for over 25 years. It's something we started uh, after a simple observation. The observation was that uh, we were doing too many amputations in patients with diabetes. Our limb preservation initiative uh, is a team approach. We have vascular surgery, the vascular lab. We have two highly trained podiatric surgeons that do only limb preservation work. And we have a full-time wound care service. Currently, I am chief of the wound care service at uh, Madigan Army Medical Center. As Jonathan pointed out, uh, when we're dealing with limb preservation, uh, the moleculite is truly a, a life-changing and amputation prevention uh, technology that has now become a critical part of our limb preservation initiative. Dr. Anderson, um, if you would, I'm going to go ahead and uh, open up the PowerPoint and get straight into the presentation, okay? Very good. So we're going to talk about the utility of point of care fluorescence for the detection of elevated bacterial burden at an Army Medical Center. Key in that title is point of care. Disclaimer, it's uh, the top part of this is uh, very important. Uh, I work for the US government. I work at an Army Medical Center. And uh, what I'm gonna talk about uh, this evening is my case studies, my opinion, and not the policy of the Army or the US government. So there's been some very interesting changes in the patients that we see, not only in the DOD and VA healthcare system, but universally. Uh, the population has become more elderly, so that the era, for example, in the wound care arena or in the limb preservation arena, uh, of seeing patients with what we call pure ulcers or pure wounds, uh, that era has pretty much disappeared. Our patients have many coexisting diseases. Uh, when we see a wound, many times it's a mixed wound. Uh, it can be, uh, for example, a patient with a uh, diabetic foot ulcer, but uh, oh, by the way, uh, they're on uh, chemotherapy, they have associated vascular disease, they have the other illnesses that impact the ability of wounds to heal. One of the uh, differences, especially in the VA healthcare system, is patients can come a long distance to be seen in a VA healthcare system or a VA hospital. It's impractical for those patients once they're seen and evaluated uh, for the pri provider to say, uh, well, we've taken a culture. We want you to come back tomorrow. Um, we want you to come back in a week to have a, a dressing change. Many times these patients travel for uh, hours, sometimes even longer, 
to to get to a VA hospital. So that if we have a modality like the moleculide, where you can get point of care information that critically leads you in decision making, then that can lead to the initiation of proper care and avoid unnecessary trips back uh, to the VA hospital. So this is one of my patients. Uh, when you look at this photograph, you, you, this is a uh, patient that I've followed for a long time. Uh, this patient has very, very severe venous disease, has uh, recurrent venous leg ulcers. So when, when you look at this wound, there, there's certainly a significant wound. The skin around that wound is irritated, uh, indurated, somewhat erythematous. So the question becomes, what is the appropriate dressing? Is this stasis changes? Is this an infection? So we'll come back to this case, but oftentimes trying to make decisions only on the clinical criteria uh, can be difficult. That doesn't mean we don't use the clinical criteria. Uh, history and physical, very, very important. And a careful examination and characterization of the wound is also very important. What the moleculite does, it, it gives you additional information can, then can uh, change, modify uh, what you do for this wound. So this uh, is a demonstration of the device. So th this is a handheld uh, device. Uh, what you see on the left side over here is with the device, you're able to obtain an image. Uh, uh, one of the very important uh, features of this device is that all the data that you obtain on patients is recorded in the device and the device has, you can assign each patient a tracking number. Uh, so if you're patient 235, for example, uh, as we did today, uh, then when you go into that patient's file, you have immediate access to the information that you previously obtained on that patient. The uh, device also has the ability that you can measure the wound and document that uh, so that you can see whether, again, you're making progress. This is the fluorescent part. So this, uh, this red area is the fluorescence that indicates that there's a, there's a bacteria burden both in the wound and the tissue around this uh, wound. So back to the picture uh, that uh, we opened the, uh, the uh, presentation with. What you see here is not only fluorescence in the wound, but you see this indurated area around here is highly fluorescent. So this would, we would say based on this image that this patient has bacteria that is spread into the surrounding tissue. And we would treat this with antibiotics like a cellulitis. So this gives us information that there's, there's uh, bacteria within the wound and that there's bacteria in the tissue around the wound. So in addition to the appropriate debridement and appropriate choice of uh, dressings based on the fact that there's a heavy bacterial burden, this patient also would be initiated on systemic antibiotics. So here we are in the clinic. Uh, so we're obtaining our uh, initial uh, image. Uh, then when uh, you're doing the fluorescent part of the uh, study, that is the actual bacteria, the lights are off and you're able to then scan uh, that wound. And what we saw in the uh, scan was that there was bacteria. What I'm doing now is using that information that we've obtained with the scan, and I'm performing a, a, a curette uh, type of a debridement. Uh, what we can do then, once we have finished that de debridement, is we can then rescan the, uh, the wound, 
to see if we've removed uh, the, the fluorescence or the, the bacteria around the wound. Now, in this particular patient, this is a patient with a, uh, a diabetic foot ulcer uh, that we're also using uh, biologic tissue. Uh, we feel very, very strongly that uh, if you put uh, biologic tissue on a colonized wound, that, that you're just wasting a lot of money. And as all of you know, uh, some of these products uh, cost as much as uh, $2,500. So that prior to the placement of any expensive biologic tissue, we make sure that uh, there's been adequate, adequate debridement, that we've removed any uh, bacteria as judged by the fluorescence, and then we would pre pr proceed on with the application of the biologic, uh, appropriately offload that uh, patient and apply a total contact cast. When this patient comes back, every time uh, the total contact cast is changed, we again scan that wound to make sure that we're not putting a patient back into a total contact cast that has a uh, a significant uh, uh, bacterial burden within that wound. So we use it every time we change the total contact cast, and we certainly use it every time we're, uh, we're considering application of a biologic. Uh, today in clinic, uh, typical, ex a very good example, uh, we were using a fairly expensive or had planned on using a fairly expensive uh, biologic uh, uh, tissue. Uh, we scanned the patient. Not only was there significant uh, biologic uh, or bacterial burden within the wound, but just like the case that I demonstrated a few minutes ago, there was significant bacteria in the tissue around that wound. So we aborted uh, the use of, of that biologic tissue. Uh, that patient we, uh, we debrided, and we also placed on systemic antibiotics. We also changed the follow-up plan uh, he's being treated for a chronic venous leg ulcer, but knowing that there, there's significant uh, bio, uh, bacterial burden, and we're going to bring that patient back a, a little, a little shorter duration uh, to change that uh, compression wrap. So this is the flow in our clinic. Uh, we, as, as I mentioned, still go through a, a history. Uh, we assess the wound. And uh, we always clean the wound, and then we scan the wound. And based on, on the, the scan, then we make decisions about uh, uh, what the next step is. Uh, that can, again, that information uh, can help us uh, uh, as we're doing our debridement. And uh, as I mentioned previously, after we debride, then we rescan. Uh, then we move on with the appropriate intervention uh, based on the information, both from the history, the physical, but the point of care information that we obtain with the moleculite uh, many times will, uh, will modify uh, what we do. We've looked at this uh, with uh, uh, two times with, with uh, uh, patient uh, studies and in uh, both times, uh, approximately 20% uh, of patients, it modified our plan. Uh, in uh, one series that we just completed, it was actually a little higher than, than that. So th this is a very good example. Again, this is a, a, a diabetic foot ulcer. You can see uh, you would make your, your clinical assessment here. Certainly a, a wound that uh, has some... Uh, some slough in, uh, but it's hard to know uh, if there is bacteria in that wound and exactly where the bacteria is. So this is the scan that, that points out that there's a, an area right in here where there's a significant bacterial uh, burden. So this uh, helped our decision making uh, with the, uh, the debris mop. What you see here is we, we've completed the debris month, and now this is a repeat scan, uh, which again, you don't see this uh, area of fluorescence. And then this patient again was being treated with a, a total contact cast, and this is at week six um, that this wound is healed. 
it, it's my opinion um, that uh, using this approach that we've been able to uh, to heal diabetic foot ulcers uh, in, in a more timely fashion. Uh, the longer a diabetic foot wound is present, the more likely it is that you're going to get osteomyelitis, that uh, you end up with an acute infection, and ultimately, unfortunately, can end up with an amputation. So the, the uh, information that you can get uh, modifies uh, your plan and does give the, the potential for, for cost savings. Now we have a study where we're looking at that, but especially in the VA, as I mentioned, where patients can, uh, can travel for long periods of time. Uh, in our patients that have uh, diabetes and oftentimes coexisting renal disease, they, you really want to avoid unnecessary antibiotics. And having the information that uh, you could obtain with the moleculite can lead to more selective use of antibiotics and can guide the, the therapy so that when the patients leave the wound care clinic, they have a longer term plan for wound care and can follow up in an appropriate inter interval, whether it's a, a month or some appropriate uh, time. The other thing that's been uh, fascinating uh, with this therapy is that you know, our patients become very acutely aware of the information that we're obtaining with the moleculite. We always show them the, uh, the uh, information, the scans, and they know then why we're debriding. They want to see the scan after we're debriding. This is a quote from one of my patients. The images helped me understand what was going on. After seeing the images, I understood the seriousness of my wound. Uh, very, very helpful, not only in education of patients, but I believe in promoting the kind of interaction that leads to compliance. We hear a lot about diabetic patients that are non-compliant. I think the more you can engage with your patients, the more information they have and the more they understand the seriousness of a diabetic foot ulcer, the more likely it is that they're going to be compliant with things like offloading boots or total contact casts. In summary, I think uh, patients that are, are coming to the DAD, DOD or VA healthcare system are, are particularly susceptible to uh, developing wounds. They're an elderly uh, population. And unfortunately, those wounds uh, can lead to more serious problems, including amputations. If we can get additional information at the initial point of care, that helps us uh, guide the uh, uh, use of various products, helps us in our debridement, uh, helps us in the uh, use of antibiotics, then we can provide better care to a well-deserved well -deserved population. Thank you so much. Dr. Anderson, thank you so much. That was outstanding. And people always say, Jonathan, why are you always fighting so hard? What, what, what is your drive? What are you doing? Well, Dr. Anderson, you know this. I'm an amputee. And fortunately for me, I become an amputee at the age of 25. So a 25-year-old can handle things a little different than a 40, 50, 60-year-old. And I see my fellow veterans at the VA, and I know my, my fellow DODs uh, members that are out there, they don't know what what's all involved with an amputation. And when I see products like this that I know can save limbs by catching things early, it really means a lot to me to make sure that I give that effort to, to make sure that everybody that, that can hear this can hear it. So I just want to say again, thank you for that. But can you please elaborate a little bit about about, you know, how you feel about amputation and how this product 
coming into the fold over the last few years is, is probably going to be able to save a lot of lambs. Absolutely, Jonathan. And I'm very, very proud of, of what we've developed at Madigan. As I, as I mentioned, we've had a limb preservation uh, initiative, initiative for now over 25 years. And we've been able to document and we track very carefully our incidents of both minor and major amputations. And we've been able to decrease and continue to decrease the, the rate of major amputations. Uh, there are lots of factors that go into that. Uh, very much a team approach is critical, but uh, the ability to determine whether or not that there's, uh, there's bacteria in a wound is critical. So when you see a patient, for example, with a diabetic foot ulcer, there are two confounding factors that will take that patient with a diabetic foot ulcer to an amputation. One is arterial insufficiency. Now we're fortunate to have a team that can, can manage that in the majority of uh, patients with diabetes. The idea that uh, quote diabetes has small vessel disease that can't be revascularized it is not true. Uh, most of these patients can be revascularized. But the other factor that contribute to amputations is infection. If you have an ulcer and you leave a colonized ulcer, for example, put them in a dressing and they go away for a week, uh, oftentimes they will come back and that, uh, that bacterial burden now has led to significant uh, infection, an acute infection. They have to go to the operating room. Uh, for more of a degreed mod, uh, so that uh, being able to detect the bacteria early, appropriately manage that bacteria, is, is a significant adjunct in preventing amputations. It's a game changer. Outstanding. And, you know, I am so thankful for our VAs. They've completely changed over the last five to seven years. You know, uh, they, they are trying their best to get people in as quickly as possible. And they do give you the option to go out now if you can't get in. But even with that being said, the fastest you're getting into a VA is two or three weeks, you know, at the earliest. And that's if your primary care can squeeze you in. It's very pivotal, in my opinion, to be able to have a good image when you go in there to the VA and try to make more of a determination that very first visit so you can make a, a better game plan. So like you said, we're not traveling back and forth and, and losing that time because that time of not knowing is where you get into trouble. Do you agree? Well, I absolutely agree. And programs like this and companies like Moleculite and what you're doing, Jonathan, part of that is also educating providers and educating the public about the seriousness uh, um, a diabetic foot ulcer, for example. And if the public understands that, it, it's, uh, I, I always look at it a little bit like uh, uh, a brush lump. Now, there's been such a push and such education with the public that when somebody develops a uh, mass in their breast, they're gonna get into their primary care doctor because they understand the seriousness or potential seriousness. The more we can do as educators, as providers, to make sure the public understands that so that when they have diabetes and they develop even a callus or a wound on their foot, they want to get to the doctor and they, they're going to push until they get to the doctor. But then when they get to the doctor, they have to have the appropriate tools to determine whether or not there is bacteria so that you treat that early and you treat it appropriately, and you treat it aggressively. Let's talk a little bit about that, Dr. Anderson. So, you know, let's talk directly to the VA and to the DOD. How have you been able to implement the use of the moleculite with your nursing staff, you know, as a workflow? Has it been a seamless workflow, very easy? I mean, how would you describe that? It, it's actually very easy. Uh, it, it, now it is part of our, it's just a standard part of our workflow. Uh, we're fortunate in that uh, in the DOD and the VA system, money doesn't turn the wheel so that when you're making a decision about the information that uh, you can get with uh, the moleculite, we err on the side uh, of uh, using the device uh, 
on a lot of our patients. And it just becomes, it's not a substitute for a good history and physical, and it's not a substitute for a good wound assessment. Certainly not a substitute for debridement. But to gain that additional information and make that part of your workload, uh, it, it's very easy and not time consuming at all. And one thing that I want to hit that we, we didn't really dig in too much, I don't think. Can you please talk a little bit about the history of the wound that you're at, able to capture with this device and how that is important as you carry a patient through, you know, five, ten years? You know, one of the uh, potential problems with, with uh, wound care centers is that many times the, the focus is uh, on the appropriate use of dressings. Uh, that is important in wound care, but the history and understanding the etiology of the wound and making sure you're treating the etiology of the wound as well as the wound is critically important. Uh, many podiatric surgeons have said it's more important what you take off from a diabetic foot ulcer than what you put on it. And that takeoff means that you're offloading. Uh, in a venous leg ulcer, compression is critical to the treatment. But many times uh, the history, uh, uh, and again, we have elderly patients that come in in wheelchairs and uh, uh, they'll have wounds. Unless you take a, the time to talk to the patients, oftentimes you don't develop an understanding of the etiology of the wound. A patient that we saw fairly recently, patient that uh, is confined to a a wheelchair had a, a problem with spinal surgery and, and uh, was being seen for a, a wound on his leg. His wife is just a great caregiver doing all of the wound care, but uh, uh, had been seeing a primary care doctor. And uh, unfortunately, that, that wound just was not healing. Uh, talking to the patient, the first question I asked the patient, why do you think you have a wound? And he says, well, my leg rubs against the wheelchair. We patted the wheelchair, did the appropriate uh, evaluation and treatment of his wound, and that wound was healed within a couple of weeks and has not recurred. So you have to take the time to understand what's causing a wound. Treat the patient, not just the wound. And one one last thing I want to hit here. So you mentioned avoiding uh, placing its, uh, expensive products with use of this device. Um, if you pre uh, prevent some of these serious infections, complications such as amputation, uh, presumably, presumably that also lowers the cost of care. Uh, can you comment about that? Yeah, I think that when you get the information so that you can come up with a care plan, and you can be very selective based on that care plan and the information that you get both from the good history and physical and the additional information from the moleculite, then you're less likely to be kind of shotgunning the wound. Uh, you know, many times uh, we see patients that have received recurrent uh, treatments with, uh, with antibiotics and what they have is stasis dermatitis, for example. If you elevate that leg, all the erythema goes away. And it's not, it's not cellulitis, but many of these patients have received many, many courses of antibiotics. And uh, when they uh, have renal failure associated with their diabetes, unfortunately, not only the cost of the antibiotics, but that can tip these patients into uh, renal failure requiring dialysis. So it's, uh, it's critical that you're very selective with the type of treatment that uh, you give these elderly patients. And the information you get with the moleculi helps you be more selective with the appropriate products. Well, Dr. Anderson, I always do this with my guests. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for your time and spending time with us to educate people tonight. With the last few minutes here, is there anything you would like to say, any final words at all that you would like to, to put out there for the public? No, I go back to the, the uh, breast mass, if you will. Uh, yeah. Oftentimes, uh, I think we treat patients uh, as 
people that know less than we we know. I think we miss a, a real opportunity there. Uh, patients uh, can be part of the healthcare team, and I think the more information that we can give our patients, and the more that they then talk about that information with other patients, then you start to gain momentum with uh, the public understanding the importance of the feet if you have diabetes. Uh, and, and I think uh, Moleculite with their presentations uh, and Moleculite with their patient care focus uh, has uh, given us the information that can help us uh, reach the public, educate the public, and help with compliance and uh, help prevent amputations. Dr. Anderson, I hope you have a wonderful night. Thank you for your time. Thank you. So everyone, that was Dr. Charles Anderson uh, out of Madigan, and I'm just so thankful that he spent a little bit of time here with us tonight and, and shared his thoughts. And I want everyone that's watching this video, we're going to share this out. Please share this with anybody that's in the wound care uh, division anywhere in the world. Please just share this. We're trying to get the information for Moleculite out there. Any VA or DOD, reach out to me at the One Leg Bandit at Manus Veteran Medical. I will get you a quote right out. We are uh, Moleculite's SDVOSB, and we're very proud to be that. So um, I hope everyone has a wonderful night. Again, email us and uh, reach out with any questions. Thank you very much.